Welcome to the Model Rail Replacement Podcast, helping you get to your onward journey. A friendly service that helps you get from A to B, or probably nowhere at all. A podcast for rail enthusiasts and amateurs alike. Well, hello and welcome to our first ever podcast, what we're calling Episode Zero, because that's probably how much rating it's going to get for the Model Rail Service Podcast. I'm your host, James, and with me is SBJ. And today we're basically here to talk about what our podcast is about. So, how are you, Sam? I'm very good. How about yourself? Oh, I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. So, uh, what have you been up to today? I've seen on Instagram you've been sort of out and about on the old Caledonian sleeper. So, I'm very jealous about that because that's <laughs> something I want to do. But, uh, how was it? How was the comfort of the bed? I'm going to say the bed was surprising out of everything the bed was actually quite comfortable uh i am just shy of six foot and i was able to lay down and my feet didn't touch the end so i'm gonna say that that's a win um i'm gonna say if you're a light sleeper don't even bother however i'm a very heavy sleeper so it takes me a while to fall asleep but once i fall asleep that's it i'm dead to the world so it worked perfectly for me but um I thought like a colleague I had, he'd, he'd be uh, the one in the Great Western and uh, the coach had a wheel flat because <laughs> he's obviously a railway man, could hear that all night long, <laughs> so, <laughs> didn't get any sleep. <laughs> yeah, that sounds horrific. Uh, I mean, the, the noise was definitely there, but having lived to what lived next door to one of the busiest roads in Portsmouth, I'd say it's um, it's not, not the worst thing in the world to hit, hit the clickety-clack of the train moving along. So, yeah, so I've had, I've had a very eventful 24 hours. Uh, I've got a few days up here in Scotland for work, um, and then I get to do a return journey later this week. So uh, I'll be able to pick up on all the things I didn't manage to pick up yesterday. Excellent stuff, excellent stuff. No. Yeah, so we're here to talk about what our podcast is about and what we aim to achieve. Um And that's mostly just talking about model railways uh, in the quite difficult task of describing it um, and getting you to visually imagine what our layouts will look like (laughs) using images. This is, uh, I feel like it's a a grand venture for you and I to just be able to talk about ourselves for a few hours. And then at the end of those few hours, we then tell people to go watch us for a few hours. So it's just basically feeding our own egos so that we can say, we've talked to you for long enough now. Now you must go and watch what we have talked about. Yeah, that, that's pretty much the plan. This is just self-promotion for our Instagram and YouTube channels. Um, you know, it's just... We're just we're trying to direct you there and get, get the numbers up. We're just falling behind everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, though. Uh, I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, you and I sat down and we had a conversation in the pub um, and we were talking about how there's not really, uh, especially in the UK side of things, there's not necessarily any... Uh, big podcasts out there for model railway fans and that's not necessarily us talking to you about how to do something and it not necessarily making sense in an audio format but it's more about just talking about various bits and bobs talking with like-minded people Um, and I think one one of the biggest things that you and I sat down and spoke about was it, it would just be nice to just talk about news hobby updates what have you been up to where have you been uh And then when you just interview someone, you can get an idea of what that person's all about, about having to necessarily, because one thing I'm going off on a tangent, we started recording this and we were, and James made the joke, oh, it's going to be me. I'm going to go off on a tangent and I've done it. So officially (laughs) I've I've broken the podcast. You Um, definitely got straight away. (laughs) I I didn't even (laughs) let it go a couple of episodes before it suddenly became uh, this like grand venture. Um, But, yeah, we sat, we sat down and we, we talked about how there's this sort of void in an audio format to talk about the hobby. And I, I feel whilst there is a sort of Around the Layout podcast, which is a uh, an American-based podcast, it'd be nice to have a UK-based one where you can sort of talk about news and bits and bobs like that. So we sat down, we both sort of said to each other almost within the same sort of breath, I'd actually quite like to do a podcast. And we sort of went off that. And it's been in the pipeline for us for, I'd, I'd say, a month, two months now. So Yeah, it's about two months. We'll be back, back in January, wasn't it? We first talked about it. And then just sort of a few texts and emails back and forth of ideas, what we want to do, what, what we think will work, what won't work. And mm-hmm. uh, 
so yeah, this is where we are. We've uh, we've actually got ourselves uh, sat down and having our first conversation about it. Um, but I think what we really need to do is probably talk about our own model and backgrounds, um, so the listeners can get an idea of what we are actually into. Okay. Well, I'm I'm going to uh, hand the floor over to you and get you to give us a start. Talk about your background, uh, how you got into model railways, and where you sort of see yourself now from a model railway point of view. So I'll I'll hand the floor straight over to you. Well, um, I suppose I am like many uh, other modelers, probably around my age, um, into the hobby because of Thomas the Tank Engine. It's uh, it's that first starting block. Um, not completely, though, because my dad was also a railway modeler. Um, so there's definitely some influence there. And my first ventures with model railways would be, I'm going to go with about the age of four, when my dad got me the Hornby Thomas the Tank Engine train set, the one with Annie and Clarabel and the trucks, uh, built on a baseboard. And I remember coming down and finding it on there, and as happy as anything. I was so happy with it. I took Thomas outside uh, at some point and pushed him along the stones. <laughs> <laughs> and it never worked again. <laughs> We've just lost 25% of our audience because of the sheer uh, admittance of that. Uh, I've still got Annie and Carabao. I mean, I, 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 the, the boy has them now. Um, so I've sort of, you know, passed them on to him. I mean, they're the only things that did survive from it. But I mean, that's, that's where I... I got into model railways there, and it's always it's always been in my life. It's the same. My dad's um, he, he got a, he had layouts as I grew up, and uh, yeah, I uh, suppose got to. I had a couple of layouts when I was a kid. I because so that Thomas layout, Thomas got wrecked, and then my dad nicked the baseboard for his own layout. <laughs> <laughs> so he had that, and that was that, that gone. Um, and I think the next next layout I got was. Uh, an, I did get an intercity, Lima intercity, you know, a gauge on Father Christmas, which was suspiciously wrapped in newspaper, which wasn't his usual wrapping. <laughs> <laughs> Something about that was very suspicious. But, um, yeah, Father Christmas got me the old intercity uh, HST. Very happy with that. Um, and that all got eventually sold off when I think I was about the age, not become about 10 years old. And my dad built me and my brother an N-gauge uh, layout we could put under the bed. Um, and we had a load of second-hand locos, Flying Scotsman, I remember, the Britannia, there was a TGV, so it was all sorts. Um, really liked that layout. Uh, unfortunately, that met an untimely end when uh, a school friend had called round to ask to borrow my maths homework book. Uh, and I went upstairs to get it, and we had a, a Micro Machines play set. And it was like a vinyl map stood on it, slipped on it, and landed on the layout. And the part of the layout was bridged because my dad used an old MDF like record unit or something. So he spaced it apart for the curve, but there was a gap down the middle. And I landed right in the middle and snapped the track. Uh. And that, that was that for that layout. And then after that, I think I sort of, you know, ventured into the teenage years where um, we sort of just pretended the model rows didn't really uh, exist. And... Uh, you and then, uh, yeah, I suppressed it. About my twenties, I think. Nice. Okay. Yeah, about um, probably. I think it's about twenty-one, twenty-two, and I, I, I just broke up with a girl, and uh, it's all feeling sorry for myself and that, and uh, just went up on the roof, and I found all my old models up there, and um, I was like, I'm just going to build a layout, and that's how I got back into it, and that was like, the first thing we built, just a little round circular track, just to run some engines. Um, and the the hobby, that, you know, that bug bit, and I was straight back in it. Nice. Um, so you've been in it for like a consistent period of time, then? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Yeah, it was definitely, definitely from that moment at twenty two because I built that I built that layout, and then I built another one. I know I was still living at home then. I was in this tiny little box room at the back of the house, and um, I managed to squeeze like a five foot by six foot layout in there, but there wasn't much room for anything else. Um, and then I moved out, um, and when uh, sort of we rent, rented for a bit, I was, uh, started living with my wife and um, just all sorts of layouts. And so I, I consistently change my mind because I like trains. I don't, and there's lots of my models that like certain areas or certain liveries, or certain, and I just like trains. So I will see 
something and go, oh, I'd love to model that. And then completely change my mind of what I'm doing and sell all my stock off on eBay and start making plans for a new layout. And then just as I start building that layout, I see something and go, I want to model that. And then start the cycle again. Your, your, your collection that you, you show off is is a very vast collection of things i i mean i know recently we we we've personally talked about uh, a lot of the stuff that you uh have wish listed or pre-ordered and stuff is around the 56 sorry the 66 sort of type mm-hmm. of loco but at the same time you you model a, a very vast like you say you pick the trains that you like rather than um the ones that fit your particular era yeah i i um I'll find ways of squeezing them in if I, I you know, if I can't, can't get it to work. It's always an excuse of why it's there. So the current project is, um, you know, it's my third attempt to build the layout around the garage. Um, I've changed my mind several times on it, but I, I changed here because I was always quite heavy network southeast, uh, western region. But the problem with that is and I explained it in one of my YouTube videos when I talked about changing my mind is I've worked in the Western region for 13, 14 years. Uh, I know it really well. I know, um, know all the ins and outs of where the traffic goes in because that's all part of my job. Um, so if, when I come planning a layout, I'll come up with an idea and I think oh, that wouldn't do that because, you know, um, that would never pass that train and that would never pass that train. Even if I come up with an imaginary route, there'd be a reason of why it wouldn't work to me. So I just wanted to start again and find an area that I didn't know so well on a subject that I wasn't so detailed in that I could just start building a layout and not get caught up in the what ifs and the this couldn't happen sort of scenario. Um, and that's how I've managed to decide that, yeah, I'm going to build a, a Yorkshire based layout somewhere near the Pennines and there'll be a preserved rail in there. So then, yeah, I can squeeze those steam engines that are sort of slowly slipped into the collection over the years um they've got an excuse to be run around as well but um yeah as you say i'm definitely very varied in what i model of course you've got the 009 layout um had a go at tt but that's that's not for me that's uh that's going to go in the, the cell pile it's just i'm just not patient enough to wait for hornby to bring out these models. It's, it's just not happening for me there so uh, that's fair enough yeah that's that's pretty much my, my modeling history, really. It's just constant changing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, so just a little bit about me. Uh, I started uh, into model railways when I was a child. I've always loved trains, uh, even when I wasn't necessarily into the model railway part of the hobby. Uh, throughout my entire life, whenever trains have come up, it's always been a case of, oh, train, rather than pretending that they don't exist. Uh like you, Thomas played a massive part in my childhood, uh, especially in my early years. But then as, as I got older, I started to appreciate ones that weren't necessarily part of Thomas. And I just realized I just like trains. Um, then dipped my toe back in the water at 17 when I had a little bit of spare cash. Uh, then back in 2013, uh, I got back into the hobby. I got really interested in the whole idea of DCC. Uh, bought about 20 locos, all DCC fitted with no layout, and then eventually got bored and then stopped. So sold most of those uh, and kept a small collection of those locos uh, before COVID hit. And then I got back into model railways again. Uh, before that, I was really big into Warhammer. Uh, I liked the whole uh, model uh, painting models and then sort of playing the games with them and stuff like that. That's where I learned to paint using an airbrush uh, with a paintbrush and weathering and stuff like that. I picked up loads of different skills. It's probably why in, uh, I can tell you in some people's eyes how I address weathering is very different to how uh, some yeah. model railway people would do it. But then it's it's a way I learned to do it and I've adapted it to trains. Um, yeah. There's definitely <laughs> something, isn't it? I, I'd um, looked at the, I've had, I've sort of, I'll dabble in other hobbies and the, it's the, Star Wars version of Warhammer, the Star Wars Legion. Yep. So have a look to the the different web painting and weathering there. And it is completely different how we do it in model railways. So mm-hmm. Definitely. And I some, I sometimes think it's really important to adapt how you do those things 
uh, and learn from other hobbies. And it's insane how when you watch um, when you watch any sort of tutorial videos uh, as a Warhammer player, you always end up accidentally watching Model Railway stuff uh, and you watch Luke Tao and, and things like that where you watch how he's doing all this scenery and you go as a Warhammer player like, oh yeah, that, I'm going to steal that technique and bits like that. And I, yeah. it, It's nice that it's come around full circle and I've sort of taken techniques I learned in the Warhammer side of it uh, to weather trains. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I started out with a, a two-lane layout in my loft with two Great Western tank engines, and it very quickly turned into a collection of diesels, electrics, and multiple units all running on DCC. So uh, it adapted to a, a very, very different layout to how it started. Um, going over a few things about myself, in case anyone's interested, uh, outside of railways, I'm an electrical trainer, a voice actor, and a commission weatherer. The voice acting is nowhere near as much as I want it to be, but I do try and throw it in as much uh, as many things as I possibly can. Um, you'll, you'll notice a lot of people comment about coffee and stuff like that of myself, and that's because I drink a lot of it. Those who uh, I see regularly uh, are easily able to point out when I haven't had enough caffeine and I must stay constantly refueled. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's, that's me in a nutshell, basically, and uh, how, how the hobby pertains. So yeah, I think it's a perfect time for us to take a little break. And then we're going to come back uh, and we're just going to sort of close out the show, talk about things uh, that are to come and then talk about how you can get hold of us, if that's okay with yourself. Yeah, let's go for it. So I mean, that's a little bit about us um, and our model railroad histories. And obviously, yeah, Matthew Jade's a love of coffee there. So, you know, if you see him and about, usually it shows because you, you do do the old commissioning at the uh, local rail shows, don't you? model exhibition we've done that a couple of times yeah it's a it's a fun thing to do to sit there with an airbrush and just make things dirty so yeah so, yeah people can get you a coffee and they can come and examine your work and decide if uh they want to get their models weathered by you and i have myself you've weathered some bands me and i was very pleased with them mm, that's so always good to definitely hear. a recommendation there and more self-plugging for myself so obviously because that's what this whole thing is about mm. so, <laughs> um <laughs> Well, if you got this far, well, thank you for listening in. Obviously, this is just uh, our, if we're calling it episode zero, it's just a sample of what we would like to do. Um, we've got, as I say, we've been texting and emailing with lots of ideas. Um, so, you know, for future episodes, we'd like to get guests in and talk to them and, you know, find out, you know, if you're one of these people, but what's your quirks, what you're into, what you like, um, how you got into the hobby. Um, and then we've got other ideas too. We want to bring news um, as often as we can. Obviously, we, we do have jobs outside of this because at the moment, the revenue from the podcast is zero. That's the name. Um, but, you know, what we're aiming for is a lot higher. So we don't have to do these jobs anymore. But um, it's model railway, so that's unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying really, yeah. really there's, hard. There's, there's some TV executive listening to this that thinks that we we gel really well. We've got great voices, and they want us on series three of the Model Railway Challenge. Then you know we're, we're laughing. But so yeah, um, as, as James has quite rightly said, we do want to get people on. We want to uh, talk about news and stuff like that. So we're going to put a I'm going to put an official timestamp on this episode. So as of today is the fifth of March, 2024. So now. Any news that gets announced, whether it's uh, stuff that's already in production and uh, we've got new samples coming out or whether it's a new item that's been announced, stuff like that, uh, we'll take any news items from there if James is happy to do so. I've done that without even asking him, but I thought let's put a date stamp on it. So any news that comes out now, that can be our sort of starting point for it. Yeah. Um, in the next couple of episodes as well, uh, James and I have sat frantically texting each other backwards and forwards uh, and we wanted to make it that whenever we have someone on uh, to talk model railways we have the same set of questions for everyone so every time you listen to a new interview you're hearing the same questions but you're hearing someone else's opinion of it uh to get to know myself and james a little bit more and to help with the sort of easing into the recording side of it we will be doing uh, an episode for each of us uh where we're going to interview each other ask the questions so that by the time we get someone who's actually famous coming on to the show uh that 
you'll know the format of the questions and you can sort of go, oh, the next one up is blah, blah, blah. And we can go through it from there. So expect those to come out on, onto your feed within the next sort of couple of weeks, months, however long it takes us to record the next episode. When we, when we do have potential famous names, and I'd like to uh, state the word potential, but we, we did list Jules Holland, Pete Waterman. <laughs> <laughs> Francis Bour- Bourgeoisie is a... Uh... Uh, yes, yes. I would love to talk to Francis, but I think I think he's the most difficult difficult person in the world to probably get hold of for, for a railway talk. I think I think Pete Waterman might be easy to get hold of, <laughs> or even Jules, but out of Rod. <laughs> yeah, I've been mean, there's so many people. Um, okay, so other than that, uh, tips tricks videos coming out soon as well. Uh, but James, one of the most most important things as we get ready to close out the show, uh, we talked earlier about it. What is a way that people can have a look at your work and see what you do? So, yeah, as we have talked about, we are just shameless self-promoters. Um, and I have my channel, Western Signalman. And at the moment, I am, as I talked about earlier, currently building my gauge layout. And I'm pleased to say that all the tracks are down in the fiddle yard. None of it's wired up, so I can't guarantee it works. But the tracks are down, so it's probably the furthest I've got with a layout build in this room. Um, so, yeah, my future episodes are going to be covering that. And then talking about what I'm actually doing the scenic side because I've been thinking about that and uh, I've had a few ideas and I've changed my mind on a few things. Um, so that's the plan for the future. So you can find me there on the YouTube channel. Alternatively, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, again, there's Western Signalman. And if you really want to talk to me, you can contact me on Western Signalman at Outlook.com. Wow, that is impressive. I wasn't expecting the email address. That's news to me. You heard it here first. We've got an email address to get hold of James. There's actually only one, only one person knew about it, and that's because it's uh, Paul from uh, I think the layout's called Beijo. One of, well, I hope I'm saying it right, but it's the Chinese layout. If you've been on the exhibition circuit, you'll know what layout I'm talking about. Yep. It's absolutely fantastic layout, and they spent years building it. Uh, and his friends have gone over to China, um, and they filmed um, and took photographs of the trains, and he wanted to model it in model form. Um, and Paul you know, kindly approached me and asked me to do a video. Um, so that will also be something I'll be doing in the future, a special video on his layout. Um, and I've had a bit, ch- bit of a chat with Paul and um, hopefully that'll be something else that people can enjoy. But yeah, it's an absolutely superb layout. So it was quite quite an honour to be asked to um, film it for him. That's awesome. I'm, I'm very proud of you. <laughs> once again i sound very condescending i am actually proud of you but i make it sound like i'm a teacher telling you that i'm really glad you didn't eat the crayons today <laughs> <It's easy>, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um so that's how you can find me and also you know throwing the ball back at you sam how can people find you uh, so I'm most active on Instagram. If you want to get hold of me, it's at emperors underscore path. Um, I usually post nonsense about my life, what's going on, weathering, bits that I'm working on. So I, I would commission weather outside of this podcast so you can see bits that I'm up to. Uh, likewise, if you want to see me really trying to annoy people uh, in my own personal projects, I try and do liveries that didn't really exist on the things that I'm painting. So if you want to get your blood boiling, that's a good way to get it started. Likewise, I do also have a YouTube channel uh, where I upload various layout updates, which are currently <laughs> at the point of recording this non-existent because I don't have a layout anymore because I am moving house. Uh, so that is something that is currently in the pipeline however i will be uploading after i finish recording this of james uh the video of my caledonian sleeper trip so that's the best Somebody way watch that and that'd be quite exciting <laughs> does that include the derailment at woking <laughs> no because i wasn't there uh, it nah. does <laughs> i did i did start recording it from fratton so it yeah. it does include bits where i'm outside freezing cold blah 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 getting all the way up to london uh, i was meant to get to london euston for nine 9 p.m. so that I could have a little bit of time in the uh, Cali Sleeper Lounge. Uh, I, lounge. Yeah. yeah, and I got there at about quarter past 20 past 10 uh, and the lounge technically shuts at uh, half 10. So I was like, can I quickly come in and have a shower, please? So I didn't get to enjoy all the benefits of that. Oh, no. But I mean, I got I got on the train, which is the main thing. So That's amazing. yeah, so that the, by the time this comes out, hopefully that video will be up as well. So yeah, that's stuff. That's how you can get hold of me. But um, I'll let you close out episode zero, James. So this has been the Model Rail Replacement Podcast. 
I've been your host, James, and my co-host, Sam, and we thank you for listening and hope you'll join us next time. Bye. This service terminates here. Please ensure you take all of your personal belongings with you. Stand clear of the closing doors, please.